Okay, to wind up intellectual property, um, maybe we will uh, do some um, examples, uh, uh, some rather weird examples, to uh, point out some of the issues uh, that you might face um, with regard to uh, intellectual property issues. Um, okay. Uh, uh, well, the, the CISSP itself, the ISC2. Um, ISC2 has, uh, of course, um, a logo, and they've got a logo for uh, the uh, for the CISSP itself. Um, uh, not terribly fancy logos, but logos, and those are registered as as trademarks. And um, the ISC2 in brackets, all squared. Um, uh, I believe that they uh, have trademarked that as well. So, you know, they have uh, certain controls over how people use it. Um, certainly the uh, acronym CISSP, they have trademarked that. Um, you are not allowed to claim uh, that you are a CISSP, that you hold a CISSP if you don't. Um, I don't uh, anymore. I, I did for a number of years, but um, you know, it's been a while since I needed to, to prove anything to anybody. So um, I, you know, I let it lapse. So I'm not allowed to say anymore that I have the CISSP um, because of their uh, trademark. Uh, and, and therefore, you know, in, in terms of using that term, I have to be very careful about how I use it. I am not a CISSP. Um, the, uh, another thing that they have uh, trademarked is um, the CBK. Now, <laughs> this is interesting. The, the exam for the CISSP is based on um, what is referred to as the common body of knowledge of security. You know, the, the uh, information about security, the understandings about security, the principles and so forth, that uh, most, uh, you know, all uh, good, uh, information security professionals would understand and hold to. And this, uh, you know, that, that, well, you know, common body of knowledge, I mean, it's, you know, it's fairly self-explanatory. The body of knowledge that we as security professionals hold in common. Uh, this is, this is not a, a difficult idea. Um, so, uh, the, uh, now the, <laughs> the phrase common body of knowledge, though, is not unique to security, and certainly is not unique to ISC2. So even though, uh, there is a common body of knowledge about security, which ISC2 is primarily responsible for developing over the years and maintaining as, uh, technology changes, uh, there are, you know, other fields that have the same thing, a common body of knowledge. Um, you know, different uh, medicine uh, in law to a certain extent, um, uh, specialized subfields of both of those professions, um, most professions, engineering, certainly, and uh, different specialty fields of engineering. So, um, yeah, there are lots of groups that have a common body of knowledge. That you, in, in your enterprise, your corporate uh, culture probably has a common body of knowledge. There are certain uh, things that you understand um, in terms of the operations of the company, the uh, objectives of the company, 
um, the general operations, which everybody in the company uh, holds in common. Uh, everybody understands. Um, and uh, it is not necessarily readily apparent or advertised to the general public. You know, so this is the common body of knowledge to that particular group. Uh, and so the phrase common body of knowledge, because it is part of the general language, therefore can't be trademarked specifically. You know, if, if ISC2 decided that they wanted to trademark that, they would face a bit, bitter battle from other groups who had a common body of knowledge and wanted to make reference to it. But what ISC2 has done is trademarked the acronym CBK. And, and so, yes, ISC2 does hold uh, a trademark on CBK. So we can't, you know, we have to be careful about talking about CBK. Um, you know, I, I might get in trouble, for example, talking about uh, the CBK of a field of engineering or something. So uh, that uh, is, is part of how uh, trademark works and, and what the limitations are. Now, the other aspect of this is that the common body of knowledge itself, that, that body of information, that body of understanding, um, possibly, uh, it, it couldn't be trademarked. It's, you know, it, that's not a, uh, an identifiable, easily recognizable uh, signature. And so, you know, we can't just say, you know, okay, that, that whole huge body of information uh, is, is trademark. No. Um, ISC2 could potentially copyright that, but um, it hasn't decided to do so, seemingly. I, th I think it has on occasion uh, copyrighted certain documents. Um, but of course, the, uh, the common body of knowledge itself changes as the technology changes. And so, um, while ISC2 keeps it up to date, maintains it, um, they do not necessarily always um, put it into fixed form and assert their, their copyright, which is another area of intellectual protection, but it's not a route that they have decided to go. Um, and besides, it would be kind of difficult, you know, it would not be hard to um, take that, reword it, and then it is a derivative product, and it is not any longer covered by the specific copyright of the fixed uh, form of that common body of knowledge which they may have asserted the copyright over. So, um, you know, understanding what you do, what you can do, what you can't do, which areas will give you some protection and which areas won't in intellectual property. Um, a very personal uh, experience of this, um, I was born in Vancouver, grew up in Vancouver, I mostly lived most of my life in Vancouver, and Vancouver hosted the 2010 Winter Olympics. I don't know if I'm allowed to use the word Olympics, because when uh, the uh, VanOck, the, the Vancouver uh, Olympic Committee, uh, the, sort of the, the extension of the International Olympic Committee that does the local arrangements for a specific uh, Olympics. Uh, they trademarked everything. They trademarked, of course, the word Olympic. Uh, the uh, Olympics, uh, I believe they tried to 
uh, trademark 2010. I'm not sure if they were allowed to because again, you know, that's, you know, a number. How do you trademark a number? Um, uh, oh, they, you know, they, they trademarked a couple of phrases from the Canadian National Anthem uh, that they were going to use as, as part of advertising. So, um, all kinds of uh, trademarks that they asserted, registered, um, to try and protect, uh, well, the money that they were going to make off the Olympics. Anyway, um, one of the things was, um, there was a, uh, a pizza place. Very nice pizza. Really enjoy their pizza. Um, called Olympic Pizza. And so there was this huge furor because, of course, Olympic Pizza had existed long before anybody even thought of bringing the Olympics to Vancouver. And, you know, uh, the Olympic Committee was demanding that they change their name because it violated uh, the, uh, the copyright. The, well, not the copyright, the, the trademark uh, that they had asserted. Uh, so on and so forth. Uh, like, yeah, I, I remember that it went through all kinds of legal shenanigans, and I, I think eventually they came to some kind of negotiated understanding. But, yeah, um, you can go overboard with this intellectual property stuff.